her 9000's game room. When looking at Jellicoe's rival turf, known as Rushing Beat in Japan, it's important to understand something about it. Something which you can't help but think is the entire reason for its existence and its release. I have already reviewed and talked about the SNES conversion of the arcade hit Final Fight. Now as you'll probably remember from my review, Final Fight wooed people with its pretty much arcade quality visuals and sound. It was an epic achievement getting the game to look and play so well on the SNES, especially when you take into consideration the huge difference between the hardware inside the coin-up and home consoles at the time. But sadly as I mentioned when reviewing it, not everything was exactly perfect. The two player mode that made the arcade original so brilliant was missing due to memory constraints. This left a demand out there for people who wanted to play a walk along beat em up with their friend. And Rival Turth was basically Jellicoe's attempt at filling this void. You will find people who love this game, people who hate it and people who, while appreciating it for offering what it offered at the time, ultimately now see it as being a game which was average and could be forgotten about as soon as other games came out which filled this void. Now for some reason the plot of this game was massively changed from the Japanese version when it was released in Europe and America. In the Japanese version the plot is something along these lines. Rick Norton, the main character, is stopped by a man with a gun who informs him that his sister is being held hostage and it's something to do with some video evidence she has in connection to drug dealing. So after this Rick goes on a quest to clear up the streets and try to rescue his sister. In the Euro-American version, while well, the main character is called Jack Flack and his girlfriend has been kidnapped by a gang called the Street Kings. He asks police officer Oswald Ozzy Nelson, who is his friend, to help him to rescue her and basically beat the ever-loving crud out of the Street Kings and wipe them off the streets. I imagine most of this change is down to Nintendo basically wanting Jellico to remove the reference to drugs, as after all Nintendo was quite picky about what it would and wouldn't allow on its consoles at this time. I find that the graphics for this game are good when you look at them and you sort of figure the time period in which this game was released. They are not really as good as those in Final Fight but you can tell that this is one of those areas where things have been cut back a bit in order to free up the power needed at that time to allow for the two player option. I find the music in this game to be quite catchy, I'm not sure if any of it is the sort of thing that most people are going to find themselves humming in their day to day life but the music from the first level seems to have stayed in my mind over the years. It's one of the video game tunes that I could hum pretty much on demand, and this is not because I've recently played this game to review it, or because I heard it while recording the footage, I could have done this long before I put the cartridge in the slot to play it again. It's just something that for some reason I like this beat and it's stuck with me. The game plays well enough, but there's also nothing other than the inclusion of a two player mode which makes it shine. There's only a choice of two characters and while they respond well and are easy to control you can't actually do that much with them. It's rather basic in terms of what you can do and this does work against the game as it does start to feel a little repetitive as you work your way through the stages. You can basically punch, fly kick and do a couple of grapples and it, it just feels a bit lacking. In conclusion I would give Rival Turf a 6 out of 10. For a moment I was tempted to give it a 7 as I have a bit of a soft spot for it, mostly due to a lot of good memories of playing it back in the day. In all honesty the game is not as good as Final Fight but of course it does have that two player mode which Final Fight lacks. One of the issues is that nowadays your choice is not one simply between this or Final Fight, there are all manner of games that you can play and there are simply much cheaper options now which will give you the best of both worlds. In all honesty, Rival Turf filled a void which simply no longer exists. If you're looking for a copy of it, a PAL cart will cost you around £8 to £12 online, including postage. The game does have some much improved sequels, but they're costly. Okay, so I originally wrote this review a few years back, and it has taken me until now to edit this review and to record a YouTube video. Well, since then, there's been a bit of a cool update to this story. A company called Retrobit Europe have released a boxed SNES cartridge called the Jellico Brawlers Pack, which is official and contains four complete SNES games on one cartridge. These games are Rival Turf and its sequels, Brawl Brothers and Russian Beat Shura, as well as Tough Enough, which is a one-on-one -on -one style beat-em-up. 
on Amazon this collection can be gotten for £22 new currently. And that is certainly the way that I would recommend SNES owners try this game, as I feel that it's a much better investment as the sequels can cost quite a lot to track down. And I'd sooner spend £22 and a nice new boxed multi-cart than probably end up spending about three times that amount on one dusty cartridge of one sequel. Okay, this is Kerr9000 signing off saying keep on gaming.